Well, uh, this week we've been uh, talking about taking authority, and, and that has been our theme throughout the week, and it ends today. Uh, next week, that is from tomorrow, our theme will be breaking barriers. So uh, we've been praying and I've been teaching on where to go about taking authority, and that has formed the basis of our prayer. So I'm concluding the week of taking authority with the message, taking authority. So uh, I will teach a bit of that, and then we'll spend a bit of time also in prayer. Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 31 to 36, will be my first text. Uh, for today. Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 31 to 36. Whilst I'm reading, note the number of times or the occasions when the word authority occurs, and you can underline it in your text. Then he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbath. This is about Jesus Christ. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. Now in the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him into their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word this is! For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. So you would note that the word authority is used twice in this passage. In verse 32, and in verse number 36, the word authority is used. The word authority comes, uh, as we find it in the English, comes from the Greek word exousia. Exousia. And that is translated as authority. And the reason why I make reference to the Greek word is to break it down to give us further meaning of what exousia means exousia can be broken into two ex and ousia ex in Greek means from or out of so when we say ex it means something that is coming out of something something from and ousia means what you have what you have, like your wealth, your property. So it's something you have. So ex osia means from something you have. From something you have. So authority basically has to do with exercising what you have. If you don't have it, you can't exercise it. So when we talk about Jesus having authority, he was operating from what he had. If we talk about we ourselves also having authority, it means we are operating from what we have. If you don't have it, you can't use it. That's how authority functions. It comes from what you have. And when we look at the passage we just read, there are two things that we see about Jesus and authority. The first is that Jesus taught with authority. When he taught the word of God, when he preached the word of God, he spoke with authority. And the people who heard him compared him with the scribes, the teachers of the law. And they said that Jesus spoke with authority not like the teachers of the law in their time. So why did they draw the comparison? Because the teachers of the law in Jesus' time when they taught would have to refer to some other authority. So and so says. It's, it's almost like the way academics uh, write uh, major theses. 
according to so and so, uh, according to so and so, and they will quote books and they will quote authorities, uh, but they didn't have authority in themselves. So every authority they had was outside of them. But when it came to Jesus Christ, he didn't quote some other Jewish authority. He spoke from himself because, of course, he is the word. And so when he spoke, the people saw the difference between him and the others. It's like uh, uh, somebody who wrote the book himself, explaining the book. He doesn't need to rely on somebody else to explain the book. Jesus is the word. He wrote the book himself. And so when he preached, he preached with authority. So he taught with authority. But not only did he teach with authority, Jesus demonstrated the power by casting out demons with authority. He cast out demons with authority. So it was not just in word only, but also in demonstration of power. He cast out demons with authority. It's very interesting when uh, you read the, the Bible, uh, the passage, uh, if you remember, when Jesus had cast out the demon and the demon came out, the people who were there listening and watching said what word this is or what word is this they didn't say what power is this but what word is this so the demonstration of the power that cast out the demon the people said what word is this why did they say that they said that because the power was released through the word so when Jesus cast out the demon, he spoke with such an authority, the people said, what kind of word is this? I mean, who, how, who uses words in such an authoritative way so that even devils will come out? Jesus used words, and his words carried a force that compelled other forces to obey him. Jesus used words words in a very powerful way so when he said to the demon come out he said it with so much authority the demon came out the people said what word is this who is this who uses words with such authority i believe this morning we can also use words the word of god with authority like jesus because not only did Jesus teach with words and cast out demons with authority, he has given us his authority. Jesus has given us his authority. His authority doesn't only stay in him. It's not only manifested in him and through him. His authority has been given to us. Luke's gospel, again, chapter 10, verses 17 to 19. And then Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 19. Luke chapter 10, this is after Jesus had sent 70 of his disciples to go out and they came reporting the miracles that had happened. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 19. Then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Note that. Not just subject to us, but in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Then Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 19. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our authority in Christ comes from what 
Christ has made available to us. Remember how I define authority from the Greek word exosia, out of what you have. Out of what you have. Out of the treasure you have. Out of the possession you have. So for us to exercise authority, we must be giving authority. So Jesus says to his disciples, I give you power over all authority, over all the works of the enemy. And then when he resurrected, he said, I have all the power, now go in the same authority that he has. Our authority comes from what Christ has made available to us. In the New Testament, what Christ has given to us as in the, in the epistles, the apostle Paul called it the riches of our inheritance in Christ. The riches of our inheritance in Christ. So there is something that Christ has made available to us. He has put into us. It's inside us. And it is out of what we have that exosia, we, we bring it out. The authority rests in us. We release it out of us. Remember uh, when Peter and John were at the beautiful gate and they saw uh, a man who was crippled and remember the words that Peter used. Such as I have, I give you. Uh, he was referring to the authority that was in him. Exosia, what I have coming out of me. So he has given us authority. Where is the authority of the believer? So we're going to look at the believer's authority. And I'll talk about three places or three things that have been given to us to give us authority. First, the believer's authority is in the power of Christ's resurrection. It is after his resurrection that he says, all power has been given to me. When he resurrected, he spoiled all principality and power. And the power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that is at work in us. So, there is the power of the resurrection resident in you and in me. If you are a believer of Christ, it doesn't reside in everybody, but it resides in the believers in Christ Jesus. The power at work in us, the resurrection power. That is your first deposit. The second is the Holy Spirit who lives in us. The Holy Spirit who lives in us is a sign that we belong to God and is the presence of God in us. The early disciples of Jesus understood the authority they had through the Holy Spirit. So the authority of the believer is first, the resurrection power. Second, the Holy Spirit's presence in us. And third, is the supremacy of the name of Jesus. Remember the disciples who came and said, Lord, even the demons were subject to us in your name. The name of Jesus, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the power of the resurrection. The name of Jesus, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the power of the resurrection. If you want to know what God has given to you, out of which you will express your authority, these three. The name of Jesus, the power of the, Holy, of, of the resurrection, the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee bows. And we have the name. If you are a believer, you have the right to use the name of Jesus. If you are not a believer, you don't have the right to use the name of Jesus in expressing authority. You remember uh, in the book of Acts, seven sons of a priest called Sceva, 
who saw Paul cast out demons. And they said, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, they used the name of Jesus, but they didn't have the authorization to use the name of Jesus. And the demon in the person said, Jesus, I know. I recognize Jesus. Paul, I know. Why did he say I know Paul? Because he's authorized to use the name of Jesus. If you were there, the demon would have said so too. Jesus, I know, and mention your name. I know you too. Why? Because your name has been registered as an authorized user of the name of Jesus. You are an authorized user of the name of Jesus. It's like Toyota will have an authorized distributor or a company will have an authorized dealer. You are an authorized user of the name of Jesus. So the demon is saying, I know the authority. I know those who are authorized to use it, but you, you cry, where are you coming from? Who are you? And they suffered the consequences of using the name of Jesus without authorization. But thank God we have the authorization through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, what do we use our authority to do? Since Christ has given us authority, what should we use our authority for? Or what should we use our authority to do? I'll talk about three things we use our authority to do, and then after that, we will pray. We use our authority to do first to proclaim God's decrees. To proclaim God's decrees. What does it mean? It means God has decreed things. And by the authority that we have in the name of Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, and through the power of Christ's resurrection, we can proclaim those words. It means we can say those words. And those words coming out of our mouth will have the same power as if they came out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. To proclaim God's decrees. We say what God says. He has said so we can boldly say. When we are declaring or speaking words, we are saying what God says, proclaiming God's decree. So that's the first thing we use our authority for, to proclaim God's decrees. If God says, let the weak say, I am strong, then we can also proclaim, I am strong. What are we doing? We are proclaiming God's decrees. If he says, you are the head and not the tail, you say, I am the head and not the tail. You are proclaiming God's decrees decrees. Anytime before I preach and we make all those declarations, it's not poetry. It's not poetry. We are proclaiming God's decrees. Why? Because everything we say comes from the scriptures. There are about 14 scriptures that have put together into that proclamation. So when we make them by authority, we are proclaiming and affirming God's decrees. We have authority to declare what God declares. So that's the first thing we have authority to do. Second, we have authority to enforce Christ's dominion. We must bring every thought and every spirit captive to the knowledge of Christ. So anything that is contrary to what Christ has made possible, we must enforce the dominion of Christ. To operate in authority, we must be aware that what Christ has made available to us is for us. And we must make it happen. If he died for our salvation, we must be saved. If he, he was wounded for our transgression, we must be delivered from our transgression. If the chastisement of our peace was upon him, we must have peace. If by his stripes we are healed, we must be healed. We must enforce the healing. You can't just say, oh, Jesus gave it to me, so it is so. You must enforce it. You must enforce it. And by authority, we enforce it. And then, by the authority of the believer, the authority Christ has given us, we establish God's will. 
we establish God's will. Whether we are moving mountains, we are praying for situations to change, all that we're doing is we're establishing God's will, we are proclaiming God's decrees, or enforcing Christ's dominion. That's all that is that we are doing. Wherever he has dominion, we proclaim his dominion. Jesus shall reign wherever the, the sun is from morning to evening. As, as the sun moves around the globe, we are establishing the authority of Jesus around the globe to establish his will. So this morning, as we pray, we are going to pray with understanding. Remember, authority is based on what is inside you. If you don't have it, you can't use it. What is inside you is the power of the resurrected Christ inside you. What is inside you is the Holy Spirit of God inside you. And God has also given to you the name of Jesus to use. These are your sources of authority. And when you use these, you are establishing God's will, you are enforcing Christ's dominion, and you are making decrees according to the word of God. So we will, with this understanding, uh, pray. And there are going to be four prayer topics that we pray about this morning. And uh, you can fashion it out in your own way to pray for specific areas of your life. Let's rise up together as we pray today. What I will do in, as we pray, and for those of you who are following us at home, uh, just be part of this prayer. I will lead you to, with a prayer, and then after I lead you with a prayer, you will pray on your own. The, I will lead you to make a prayer declaration, and after that, we will, you will use your own words to pray, and then I will go to the second topic. I will lead you in the prayer, and then afterwards, you will use your own words to pray, and we'll do that for four prayer topics. Are you ready? All right, so say with me, Heavenly Father, let your kingdom come. I proclaim that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God, and of Christ Jesus. Amen. Now make that decree that every kingdom, every nation, every force will come under the kingdom of God and of Jesus Christ. No matter what the kingdom is, no matter what the force is, whether it's a spiritual force, it's a governmental force, it's a judicial force, it's a legal force, it's a military force, it is being subjected to the kingdom of God. The kingdoms of our world become the kingdoms of our God and of, and of Christ. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for your kingdom that rules. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom rule. Let your dominion be established over this earth and over every sphere of this earth and over every area of operation of this earth in every manifestation of power in every kingdom whether in science in the arts in business in education in culture whatever it is in the military in 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 every manifestation in religion let kingdoms bow to the name of the lord jesus christ let kingdoms bow to the kingdom of god let your rule supersede every other rule lord in the name of jesus we decree your decrees that your kingdom rules that your kingdom reigns that your kingdom is supreme we decree the decrees of god over every sphere of power over every manifestation of power over every kingdom of men over every kingdom of demons they come subject to the kingdom of god we overthrow the kingdoms of the enemy in the name of jesus 
Oh yes, declare, decree the decrees of God's kingdom. Ruling, ruling in your life, in your business, in your activities, in every area of operation. The kingdom of God rules. The kingdom of God reigns. The kingdom of God is above all. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh yes, oh yes, the Lord decrees victory, the Lord decrees victory, the Lord decrees victory in the name of Jesus. Say with me, Heavenly Father, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, manifest your perfect will in my life today i subject every situation in my life under the feet of jesus now pray for the will of god to be done in your life as it is in heaven the will the heavenly thoughts of god manifested in your life that which God thought of in eternity concerning you before you were born his will his heavenly desires and designs manifested in your life in the name of Jesus may the perfect will of God be manifested in my life in your life in our life today this is a day of perfection for us a day of perfection for us in the name of Jesus Oh, pray, 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 pray. Every situation in your life, every situation in your life that is misbehaving, a situation that has become unruly, a situation that is not conforming to heavenly will, we subject it to the feet of Christ. Let Jesus be Lord and King over every situation in our lives. Oh, talk to him, talk to him. Talk to him, talk to him. Take authority over every unruly situation. It may be a sickness. It may be a discord in your family. It may be something on the job. It may be your finances. It may be a business transaction. It is going rogue. It is going out of authority. We are bringing it back into authority. Your health is coming back under authority of the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we are bringing everything captive to the authority of Christ. We are bringing our finances captive to the authority of Christ. We are bringing every situation captive to the authority of Christ. Oh, pray, 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 pray. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. You are taking authority over it. Your children will not be wayward. Your children will not be wayward. Your grandchildren will not be wayward. In the name of Jesus, they will come under the blood. They will come under the garment of salvation. They will come under the authority of the name of Jesus. The plans of God concerning you shall come to pass. The purposes of God will be established in your life. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. He will not win this world. In the name of Jesus, we come with authority over every power that is not subject third prayer say with me heavenly father i walk in the power of the resurrected christ by the words of my mouth i exercise authority over demonic forces and their plans and cast them out in jesus name now as Jesus used words you begin to use your words you are casting out every situation you are binding and casting out every situation that is demonic in source demonic in manifestation demonic in expression we bind and we cast it out in Jesus name 
in the name of Jesus get out of my family in the name of Jesus get out of my business in the name of Jesus get out of the church every evil spirit we cast you out by the word cast you out we cast you out be gone get behind me Satan move away from my path move away from my path every spirit of harassment move away from your life every spirit of frustration move away from your life every spirit of failure move away from your life oh the power is in your words the power is in your words speak the word with the authority of the holy spirit living inside you speak the word with the authority of the resurrected christ speak the word with the authority of the name of jesus we are clearing the spiritual atmosphere atmosphere is shifting atmosphere is shifting chains are broken limitations are broken atmosphere shift atmosphere in the family shift atmosphere in your business shift atmosphere in your life shift in the name of jesus we seize the commanding heights of the realm of the spirit by the name of jesus final prayer say with me heavenly father by the authority of christ i walk in boldness to possess my inheritance as a child of god by faith i rejoice in your abundant blessings in jesus name the blessing is yours take it the favor is yours take it the increase is yours take it the abundance is yours take it god has given to you all things that pertain to life and godliness it has been given take it it has been given take it it has been offered take it it has been offered take it your blessing take it every blessing every blessing we are blessed with all blessings in spiritual all spiritual blessings in heavenly places we take them we bring them into manifestation in the name of Jesus we declare victory we rejoice in the abundance of blessings that God has given to us say with me heavenly father your word is true your thoughts concerning me are for good and not for evil i have exercised authority today in the realm of the spirit and i see manifestations in the realm of the natural conforming to your decree to your will to your purposes in jesus name i thank you father i rejoice in your blessings in jesus name come on give the lord some praise this morning oh give the lord praise as if you know if you know that you know that you know that you know that you've taken authority then rejoice in the lord Hallelujah.